Thank you for tuning in. In this video, I want to cover two items as it relates to Spark. The first is I want to discuss the connection process of getting an app like DroneBlox running with Spark. This applies to a lot of different third-party apps built on the DJI SDK. And the second thing I want to do is just do a quick demonstration. I get a lot of questions asking if DroneBlox is compatible with Spark. We've supported Spark for a couple months now and I feel like with the latest SDK version 4.7.1, things have really improved. So we'll just do a simple demo and then hopefully you guys download it and give it a try with your Spark. First thing we'll do is power everything up as you can see here. I'm just gonna do a quick test and see if I can arm. So everything looks good. And then if you're not aware, Spark will broadcast a Wi-Fi network, which is a little bit different than a lot of the other DJI remotes where we connect via cable. So I'll look for that network. I see it here. I'll wait for a few seconds for that to connect. Now what I normally recommend before going into any third-party app is just check out your DJI Go 4 app. Make sure there's no errors or aircraft firmware updates. A lot of things are changing from time to time, so you want to make sure you check that and going to look through all these screens. Just looks like we're getting no GPS. I'm here in the garage. That's not a problem. Go ahead and close that. I still have a Wi-Fi connection with my remote. Now I'm launching drone blocks. And what we should see is a spark connection. And the most important thing is you see some telemetry. We have altitude, satellites, battery. A lot of people ask why DroneBlox doesn't work. Well, if you don't have a good connection, you're not on the latest firmware or other issues, you can see that these values will be blank, which can lead to problems. So go ahead and just yaw, and you can see that my heading is updating. What we try to do with DroneBlox is tap into a lot of the SDK capabilities and expose those to users that want to be able to do this through block programming. So let's preview the mission. You should always see a marker on the map that lets you know that your GPS is good. One problem that we run into is given that we have a Wi-Fi connection with the remote, we don't have a good internet connection. We can't get out and load data. So what I normally recommend is if you're using an iPhone, that's going to be less of a problem because you'll have your cellular network as well as Wi-Fi. But in other cases, if you have a Wi-Fi only device, I normally recommend loading your maps. You can go in, preview mission, zoom to where you're going to fly, let those load, and then do your Spark remote connection. So what I'll do now is we'll go outside and give this just a quick test to demonstrate the latest SDK with Spark. I'm outside here. I'm actually trying to hide in this bush for minimize the amount of reflection, but you can see that we have 10 satellites. Generally recommend 10 or more. Battery's getting kind of low. I've used the sequence to arm spark. Then I've gone ahead and arm spark just. I'd like to check that the video feed is good. I've gone full screen. Go back to that. I'll go ahead and disarm the motors. So everything looks good there. Do a quick mission preview. We have our home location. Shows what we're doing. In this case, we're just gonna take off. Yaw 360 and then land. So let's go ahead and launch the mission. Go ahead and click start mission. It'll ask us if we want to confirm. Hit yes. So what normally happens is we issue a takeoff command and then immediately because we have an altitude specified, we give Spark a change in altitude. Now it goes up 25 feet. Should yaw 360. And this is all done with our block code tapping into the DJI SDK. Once it's done yawing, should issue the land command. And then we'll also hear the remote let us know that it's landing. Tells us mission completed successfully. Okay, that was just a simple demonstration. You can actually see 
how close to the takeoff position it landed. All in all, the spark testing has gone well. We have seen a few issues as it relates to commands being ignored, but we're looking into that. If you have a Spark, a Mavic, a Phantom, download drone blocks and tap into the DJI SDK. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.